Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Donkey Kong, you know, maybe it's time to consider a different food than bananas. People are always stealing your stuff, dude. And since DK doesn't strike me as someone who has time to go to a restaurant or grocery store, I'm willing to bet HelloFresh will make his life easier. Now there you can choose from a humongous variety of meal plans from all different cultures and for all ages. Burgers, exotic chicken bowls, pizzas, trust me, there's a lot there. And it's a lot healthier than whatever your grandma puts in those holiday cookies. You can also easily customize your weekly meal plans if you're feeling different or if you want to look out for your kids, or maybe you want more control over your choice of protein. If you don't feel like beef, then you get chicken. And it's all delivered directly to your doorstep so you save money on going out. Each box comes complete with easy to follow recipes so that prep and cooking take no time at all. And it's all wrapped up nice and neat saving all waste and portioned just right to make sure you use everything in the box or you can request a little extra to have leftovers for the next day. As someone who works from home, having stuff delivered to me is very convenient. And since I've been keen on maintaining a stable weight, also thanks in part to the yoga that I do, it's important that I'm putting healthy stuff in my mouth. Like that crispy buffalo spice chicken meal, that gets a high recommendation for me. Not only is it very easy to make, but it has the right amount of kick that leaves me full and satisfied. And it's always nice to keep my cooking hands busy. And they can keep your hands busy too with their amazing deal. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code SCMJ18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, code SCMJ18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Happy holidays, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, your support for this channel is greatly appreciated, and I hope you enjoy whatever it is you decide to cook. Now then, let's continue on with the show. so we've reached the conclusion of my first visit with the Donkey Kong series. I wanted to keep things in the mainline series for now. And I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, I thought you would at least cover Donkey Kong Jungle Beat on the GameCube, the one that rocked the bongos. And look, if I'm taking these out, I'm only doing that once. So what makes the most sense to me, later down the road, I'll make a single video talking about all the Donkey Kong games that use the bongos as a controller. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to stick to when Donkey Kong made a more traditional return after Donkey Kong 64, 11 years later. Oh yeah. But Donkey Kong never really went anywhere after Donkey Kong 64. But with Rare now belonging to Microsoft, and because I guess Nintendo just didn't consider TK a high enough priority, Donkey Kong meandered in a bunch of spin-offs and cameos over the next decade. It was still a healthy life from what I can gather, people had good things to say about Jungle Beat and the Mario vs Donkey Kong series, but Donkey Kong's traditional platforming antics seemed like a thing of the past. Until 2010, at that year's E3, Reggie fils was would surprise fans with Donkey Kong's Return to the Country formula, aptly named Donkey Kong Country Returns, and the folks behind it was Retro Studios of Metroid Prime fame. That was reason enough for me to consider it. I love Retro Studios, and I love Metroid Prime. A new Donkey Kong Country was on our way. But then, I just sort of forgot about it. Probably because I was already preoccupied with Sonic Colors and some other games. I don't remember exactly what I was playing in 2010 now that I think about it. Um, maybe I was also bitter about my initial experience with Metroid Other M and I didn't want to give Nintendo another dime for at least another month? <laughs> Who can say? I don't think that's the case, but I just didn't pick it up. And it wasn't until the Donkey Konga Line charity event we did a few years back where I finally got to play it and, well, I wasn't exactly in a rush to play it afterwards. Oh! Wow, that one shots you? What the fuck? It looked like Donkey Kong Country, it sounded like Donkey Kong Country, but it had what I consider tacked on motion controls, no matter if you were using the nunchuck combo or just the Wii mode standalone. But I also wasn't in the best state of mind when I was playing this. We were at the tail end of our 24 hour marathon, even though I had a nap earlier. I was still incredibly tired and I wanted to go back to sleep. That's not the case this time, I'm up and ready to go, and we're not just looking at returns, we're also looking at Tropical Freeze, the direct sequel originally released for the Nintendo Wii U, but I'm going to be tackling the Switch re-release from 2018. Let's tackle Donkey Kong Country Returns first. A sudden volcanic eruption has released this ancient tiki tribe that begins to hypnotize the local wildlife, and then they go and steal Donkey Kong's banana hoard under his nose, Diddy Kong probably being like, Donkey Kong is gonna fucking kill me. But DK is quick to jump into the scene, and it turns out that he and Diddy are immune to the Tiki's hypnosis, probably because of the high potassium diet, but DK goes ahead and gives the Tiki a proper response. <laughs> After delivering the good monkey slaps, Donkey and Diddy Kong set off to explore the island and get their bananas back while punching the shit out of everything in their way. 
It's basically the first Donkey Kong Country, but with Tiki's instead of Kremlins. No King K rule isn't a thing in this game, or the next to jump ahead here. And I don't know, maybe Retro Studios figured the Kremlins was more of Rare's thing? I don't necessarily think you need the Kremlins to make it a Donkey Kong Country game, but I'll admit it felt like something was missing. None of the Tiki guys command the screen like the Kremlins or their goons did, and the final boss of this guy, the Tiki's you previously defeated all come together to power him up, but my ass was rolling when it turned out to be nothing but Nintendo's staple giant head with two hands that was was so lame. Bongo, bongo looking motherfucker. Oh wait, shit, that boss used bongos, right? DK had bongos. Maybe that was the gag. Damn. And that's the setup for Donkey Kong Country Returns, taking Donkey Kong through eight different areas located on DK Island. And while Returns brings back a few classic DKC tropes, I noticed the level themes were considerably more Mario Brothers, which I want to say upfront that's not automatically a bad thing. If they want to keep things a little more traditional and a return to form not seen in over a decade, you know, keep it safe, keep it consistent. But I think a little more effort could have been placed in the world themes. The first DKC had Congo, Jungle, Monkey Mines, Vine Valley, Gorilla Glacier, Creme Croc Industries Incorporated, Chimp Caverns, and Gang plant galleon this game jungle beach ruins cave forest cliff factory volcano not very imaginative at least they still have fun with the stage names they're about on par with the other titles DKC Returns brings Donkey Kong back to 2D action with all pre-rendered graphics now replaced with fully 3D models, resulting in a 2.5D adventure that I think remains one of the Nintendo Wii's best looking platformers. The graphics are very colorful and bouncy, the sound design is equal parts crunchy and whimsical, I love Donkey Kong's presence in this game. The way he crashes into every stage with the energy that gets you pumped. And I don't know why, but Donkey Kong's default face and bonus rooms makes me laugh. Like, what's this supposed to be? Happiness? Sadness? I don't know, maybe he's just happy to be here. All the remixed music, namely from the first Donkey Kong Country, sound great with their new updates. They even got Metroid's Kenji Yamamoto and Manako Hamano to help compose it, and maybe that's why one of the beach levels sounds right out of Metroid Prime 2. But despite this praise I have about the presentation and sound, I knew heading into this I was going to be a little contentious about a couple of things because even though it's a return to the country formula, it's not a one to one return. To start somewhere, assuming you're not doing local multiplayer, you only play as Donkey Kong here. Breaking open a DK barrel won't give you a buddy that you can switch to on a dime, even though Diddy is perfectly fine by himself in two player. Diddy Kong in single player is a glorified power up. Extra hit points are added to your health and you can hover in the air for a short bit. But Donkey Kong is still front and center. I think this is pretty lame. I love Diddy Kong in the original games. I didn't care that he couldn't defeat stronger enemies as easy as Donkey Kong. His jumping and ground control was buttery smooth. Made platforming tremendously fun for me. Donkey Kong is plenty capable, but like before, this motherfucker's got some weight to his moves and jumps. And it always teeters between bearable and straight up uncomfortable. I feel like I can never be as precise as I want to be with platforming, and later when these platforms get tiny, my hands start to get a little sweaty. I think it doesn't help that I was playing with the Wiimote and Nunchuck controls and with this playstyle, there's no dedicated run button. Your speed is determined by how far you tilt the analog stick, which I don't find very natural in a 2D platformer, let alone a Donkey Kong Country title. Playing with the Wiimote alone fixes this, since because you only have the D-pad for movement now, they give you a dedicated run button. But now you also gotta shake the whole fucking controller if you wanna do the motion shit, and man, I gotta say, this game really didn't need this shit. Donkey Kong's got a ground clap for breaking objects, and he can blow on things to deal with certain hazards and revealing certain goodies, though I think this maneuver was ultimately needless and pace breaking, and I'm glad the next game got rid of it. And then you got the classic roll that you can use to get some major horizontal jumps or combo through ground to enemies like you could before. Fuck! Oh, fuck, wait a minute. No, you can't. You can't roll through more than two enemies at a time, it looks like. I think if you got Diddy by your side and if you do the attack on slopes, you can extend it longer, but naturally, this roll is pretty gimped. I also think it's a little unruly. Now, you can reach some high speeds with this, but because that speed can easily make you overshoot your destination, and because you need motion controls to activate it, I rarely use the technique, though sometimes I found myself accidentally doing it, because I discovered that you can also do the roll by double tapping the analog stick forward, and in some sections, like this bit where you have to carefully move between these moving stones, it got me killed or at least hurt because my stuttered movement accidentally triggered a roll. On the opposite side of the spectrum, sometimes the roll wouldn't activate because the game didn't register my movement and whoop! Ugh, god man, I can't tell you enough how shit like this this makes me fume. Which is why I'll just say now, if you haven't played this game yet and really want to, but don't want to deal with the motion stuff, get the 3DS version. Yeah, there's a 3DS version. Nintendo did this with a couple of games and your mileage may vary on the quality, but the attempt is appreciated, I suppose. The graphics aren't as good and the frame rate was cut in half and it's kind of inconsistent altogether. But there's no motion stuff, everything's mapped to a button, and that alone makes it worth it. I didn't play through the whole game again on the 3DS just to be clear, I'm sticking to the original for this video, but from my brief exposure into the 3DS version, I wish I stuck with this version instead. But I am glad that Tropical Freeze pretty much adapts the 3DS control scheme as the basis, thanks CMOS.
Though the motion controls were a constant sour point for me even after getting somewhat cozy with them, I still gotta stress that as far as 2D platformers go, this game is pretty damn great. Sure, I can't switch between Donkey and Diddy and yeah, I gotta shake plastic shit a whole bunch, but I was impressed on how much fun and variety was packed in these worlds, with the zany presentation accentuating the colorful vibes. The game takes full advantage of its 3D presentation with dynamic camera angles for stuff like barrel blasting, and explosive action that keeps your blood pumping using both the background and foreground elements on a whim for different obstacles. There's a bunch of these grassy walls and ceilings you can grab too, giving us exhilarating platforming that's both fun and nerve wracking. There's a couple of levels where everything is nothing but a silhouette, and I know by this point in 2022 these are a little been there, done that, but they are still some of the best levels in the game, and look so gorgeous with amazing music on top of that. Style can go a long way in making even the most standard 2D level more fun and memorable. And as much as I don't like the motion gimmick, I do love the feeling of doing these rapid fire fisticuffs at the end of boss fights and at goalposts. And you really punch the fucking shit out of these things too, like. That sense of energy never really diminishes through the whole game and ended up being my favorite thing about it. This game's challenge is greatly varied too, a lot of obstacles tied to the world's current theme, often putting a different spin on a previous obstacle each time that keeps things from getting too stale. But sometimes I think it gets a little repetitive anyway. I couldn't tell you why, but I think Retro had a fetish for the minecart and rocket barrel sequences. The fourth world being almost nothing but this shit, so I hope you didn't mind these from before, especially since you get hit once here, you're fucking toast. This game's actually pretty damn hard. It's way harder than the other country games, at least DKC2 included. The precision and timing needed to cross some stages. The game's occasional dip into hazards that just straight up kill you in one hit. And I'm talking outside of the minecart and rocket barrel stuff. And then there's the minecart and rocket barrel stuff. These get tough in the second half and beyond. Some I even found not very good, like the one with the bats. Fuck that one. They want me to avoid projectiles like a space shooter with fucking jetpack joyride controls. And I love jetpack joyride. But this ain't jetpack joyride. By the game's eighth world, I feel the devs either ran out of steam or went too hard on making sure the final world was the most challenging. Because what this amounts to is a bunch of do or die trial and error bullshit. Obstacles that go against the grain of established design or disrupts the general flow of the game for the sake of having gotcha moments that I absolutely fucking despise in platformers. I want to say World 87 ended up being the worst level in the game for me. If for any reason the needing to do some high bounces off of a chain of enemies that until now I believe was not a required thing to do, and this is all happening while you're getting chased by rising magma meaning you only get one shot to do this or you're screwed. Now unlike the other games where all you had to do was hold the jump button down and you're guaranteed a larger bounce, in this game and in Tropical Freeze, you have to let go of the jump button and then hold it down again right before you touch the enemy to get a high bounce and I'll tell you man, that is some of the most awkward shit to do in the heat of the moment and sometimes it just doesn't fucking work and it pissed me off. It's worse when you have Diddy Kong because holding down the jump button also activates the hover. So when you gotta do some chain bouncing, you gotta time it so that you hit the jump button in time without accidentally starting a hover. <laughs> Just explaining this shit sounds clumsy. I don't know why they made it like this. Then there's these temple levels that unlock when you collect every Kong letter in a world. And these got no checkpoints, you gotta do the whole thing in one life. And these do not fuck around. But kudos to Retro Studios for making the Kong letters worth something this go around. In fact, they're the only thing that matters towards full completion this time. There's still the traditional bonus room letting you grab a bunch of bananas for extra lives and puzzle pieces you collect for concept art in the extras menu. But these don't count towards completion, they're totally optional. Thank fuck because I was awful at collecting these. It took me until the fifth world for me to collect all the puzzle pieces in one stage in one go. And I don't know what to say, maybe I should have breathed on more flowers or some other shit. But I hated doing that, I gotta keep slowing down and do that shit. Not that I ended up collecting all the things anyway, so no, I didn't play the golden temple level you unlock for getting everything. Look, getting everything in this fucking game has exempt me from fully completing every Donkey Kong game past this. Those are the official rules. No, don't ask me for a source on that. This is the fucking internet. For this game and Tropical Freeze, I took things very casually and I was better off mentally for it. I did go out of my way for banana coins though. You can buy items from Cranky Shop with these and besides extra lives, you can also purchase some invincibility potions that guard from a huge number of hits. Even covers Donkey and Diddy in solid gold that immediately reminded me of King Homer. The 3DS version also adds some green balloons that save you from bottomless pits if you have them, and even gives you a shield that lets you survive multiple hits from the minecart and rocket barrel levels. I'm telling you, mate, get the 3DS version if you want to play this, and hurry before it's too late. I only spent 20 bucks on mine in a second in Charles. You can too. Don't wait. Store's closing down next year. I was disappointed to say that the only playable animal buddy was Rambi, whose back has a great power up, destroying everything in his path, and my soul resonates with this new expression that screams, Fuck, I am so tired of this shit. But still, there's no Unguard, no Espresso, no Squitter, not even Winky. And I know I said I didn't care about Winky, but that's no reason why you can't try something with him again. And Squawks, poor dude's been demoted to Puzzle Piece Finder, not a very interesting one at that. But Donkey Kong Country Returns was a good time. The presentation was great, and the platforming was legitimately fun for most of my adventure. It's tough, and I don't like the controls on the Wii, but I still enjoyed my time. The level design is simply that solid. Until the end of the game. But of the two games I'm looking at today that I could really, really recommend, 
then I'm going to tip my cap to Tropical Freeze. Retro Studios' second entry in their Donkey Kong lineup that I'm glad they got another swing at, but at the same time, I was like, fuck, I'm never getting another Metroid Prime game. You can even see Samus' gunship abandoned in one of the jungle levels. I can read between the lines, you pricks. This was originally released for the Nintendo Wii U back in 2014, but in 2018, it saw a second life on the Nintendo Switch, with a brand new funky mode that became Nintendo's memetic equivalent to featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. As for the story, it doesn't involve Donkey Kong's bananas getting stolen at least, but it's nothing much else. Donkey Kong celebrating his <coughs> birthday along with Diddy, Cranky, and oh shit, Dixie Kong's back. Glad she was able to get her job back after... God damn. I hope the unemployment checks were good at least. Anyway, Donkey Kong's party is cut short when the Snowmads invade DK Island, a bunch of animal vikings that I ended up liking more than the Tiki's, but I also feel that's a low bar. They end up blowing the Kongs far away and freeze the whole island solid. So DK Crew version 2.0 must now travel across different islands to get back home and deck the leader of the Snowmads in the dick to save the day. Tropical Freeze can be quickly summed up as an HD DKC returns, but I don't want to sell things short. First, the graphical fidelity has been improved by leaps and bounds. And I mean, Returns was already a great looking game, but Tropical Freeze adds a clarity that makes everything stand out beautifully on HD screens, even rocking new level themes that don't feel as cookie cutter as before and make for a more distinct adventure. Although the musical levels in the third world reminded me a bit of the opening part of the Lion King game on the Genesis and SNES, and how's that for a post-traumatic flashback? I fucking hated that game. But no, this game's packing some great worlds and even better stages, and they eased up a bit on some of the more notorious bits from Returns. They brought the minecart and rocket barrel back, but you can take multiple hits now. While it doesn't mean shit when you fall into a bottomless pit in the minecart, you still have a fighting chance to actually complete the stage and not have to start all over because your fucking hair touched the ceiling. Oh yeah, get fucked, you piece of shit. It's things like that that give me a raging heart on. Donkey Kong is still front and center with the other Kongs acting as glorified power-ups again, but at least we get three different flavors this time. Diddy's about the same as Returns, giving Donkey Kong a short hover and better swimming control underwater, which Donkey Kong can now do again, by the way. Yeah, he couldn't swim at all in Returns, water was just another bottomless pit. He forgot how to swim, I guess, but in Tropical Freeze, he's back in proper form, but now he needs oxygen to breathe underwater too. What? Why? He could hold his breath indefinitely before, what, did they consider that too unrealistic? You are sending me on an emotional roller coaster retro. Diddy ended up being my least used Kong. Wait, actually, no, I think it was a tie between him and Cranky. The crusty bastard makes his playable debut here, letting Donkey Kong do a pogo jump like Scrooge McDuck. Years of shit talking Donkey Kong and this is the best he can do. You can bounce off enemies to keep the momentum going and avoid spiky hazards. I know speedrunners love Cranky Kong, but casually, I didn't find him very appealing. Dixie Kong, on the other hand, undoubtedly the MVP. A double jump that transitions into a hover that lasts longer than the one Diddy offers? In a platformer? That's like giving Link a Glock in a Zelda game. Anytime I saw a buddy barrel 9 times out of 10, I was choosing Dixie. Her abilities are just a caliber above the other two. I should make note that I decided to play in the game's new funky mode. Figured if I was going to play one mode from my experience, might as well make it the one everyone jokes about. Though I wish Funky didn't peek his head from behind the bushes like a stalker. Funky mode lets you play the game as either Donkey Kong or Funky Kong. You can switch between the two whenever, but I went with Donkey Kong for the first run, only switching to Funky for some post-game shenanigans. But dear god, if you ask me a Tropical Freeze was worth the purchase because of Funky Mode, without hesitation, I'd say yes. Funky Kong is all the Kongs combined into one. He's got a shitload of health, an amazing double jump that goes into a hover, his ground roll lasts forever, he can breathe underwater, and his surfboard makes him immune to spikes. He's basically the easy mode, but hot damn I had so much fun blasting through stages trying my best to keep the pace going, it was like I was playing a different game, but one that I found immensely enjoyable. So as Donkey Kong or Funky Kong, you got something to really look forward to here. I'm personally looking forward to my next Funky Mode playthrough because that was a blast, it really was. David Wise also returns to score the game's soundtrack, the first he's done since Diddy Kong Racing back in 1997, and it's like the dude never missed a beat. At first listen, I found the soundtrack more enjoyable than Returns, despite loving the remixes of that game's OST as well, so it's like comparing a score of 90 to an 88, really. I don't think it has the same level of intensity like in the original trilogy, but a lot of the music is just undeniably catchy, and a lot of classic Wise compositions are given new life. They blew ball the fuck out of you if you like Bramble Blast, though. It plays at one stage for like, 10 seconds before the rocket barrel raises its ugly head and makes you want to choke a cat. A cat that had it coming, I didn't mean you guys. Tropical Freeze only has 6 main worlds as opposed to Returns 8, and my playthrough was about 2 thirds the length altogether, but it not only has a secret world for collecting all the Kong letters, but every world also has a bunch more stages crammed in, some being only accessible by discovering alternate exits in certain levels like in Super Mario World. So while Tropical Freeze lacks the numbers, it makes up for with longevity and replayability. 
The game is also still pretty tough, not as tough as returns, but the game's inherently shorter nature means you'll be running into tougher levels faster than before. And some levels are still a strenuous test of reflexes that can make you do stupid shit. Holy fuck, I don't know how the hell I made that. Or check this ultra instinct shit I managed to pull off in one of the final levels. Jesus fuck, DK's face really says it all here. You have a wider selection of items in the shop that gives you more to work with, most returning from the 3DS version of returns like balloons that save you from bottomless pits, and there's even balloons that save you from drowning. But now there's also a buddy barrel you can crack whenever you need extra help. Double D's dick and cock. Don't know why they dedicated two barrels to a penis, but I'm here for it. Funky's initials are also FK? Yeah, you know what I'm thinking. Fine kitty, where the fuck did he go? On top of the extra lives and invincibility potions from before, yeah, I want to say Tropical Freeze is an easier time, but still much harder than the SNES game, so don't get too comfortable, god, especially in the boss fights, which ended up being the low point for me. There's nothing inherently wrong with them, and they're more dynamic than the battles and returns. They just go on too long, the final two encounters being the worst examples. How many times do I gotta hit these guys before they fucking stay down? And why are my Kongs blinking like hazard lights? Somebody help these guys. I'm glad to see that my Donkey Kong journey is ending on a high note. While I wouldn't put either of these above the original trilogy, at least not on first playthrough, these are still great platformers. They're a little too intense at times, but they deliver great Donkey Kong action that I expect from the country series. Since Retro Studios is currently busy working on Metroid Prime 4, at least I hope they are, I don't know when we'll see another Donkey Kong Country game, and whether it'll be with a different development team or not. Whatever the case, I hope it continues to have the same energy found in the retro games. But next time, make the Kongs separate entities again in single player, and just make all their secondary abilities like upgrades you can buy in shops or find in barrels. Just give players the choice on which Kong they can play as. I know it's Donkey Kong Country, but Donkey Kong was never the sole star of the attraction. And you know, bring the Kremlins back too, at least King K. Rule. I think he's due for a comeback. Returns and Tropical Freeze get my recommendation, so get them before they inevitably shoot up in price, especially Returns 3D. And that will be a wrap for Donkey Kong, for now at least. And it was fun, I got to replay games I loved, experience games I've been meaning to play for a while, and then Donkey Kong 64. I wonder if I'm ever gonna play a platformer like that again for this channel. Well, the future's unwritten and all that. But if you want to start this series from the beginning again, you can catch the beginning of the card up top, wherever the hell it is. I don't know. I, I never know with this shit. But I'm done with platformers for now. I'm feeling some action. 2D, 3D, doesn't really matter. We got to start somewhere. I'm thinking Bayonetta 3. I'm going to look at that game for a while. And uh, hopefully we're ending 2022 uh, with a bang rather than a whimper. But uh, I got other things planned for 2023 and beyond. I'm going to get you guys up to speed with that because uh, there's, uh, there's some things I want to talk about. But as always, thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there. Look out for one another. Uh, happy holidays if I don't make the next video before Christmas and all that sort of shit. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care. Fucking 9 out of 10 ending there, John. That's what happens when I don't really fucking script. Like my, my script just says outro.